back here on the Cover 3 podcast. And at the end of every single month, we like to get together and we like to hand out the Cover 3 awards. We've got the player of the month. We've got the coach of the month, the team of the month, the game of the month, and of course, everyone's favorite, the Fornellis. Let's begin with player of the month. Danny, who would you like to nominate for consideration? Uh, I will go... I give one nomination, or I mention several of my nominees. Let's, there are no rules here. Yeah, there's. I mean, this is, yeah, this is. I'll go. We talked about him a little bit earlier. I'll go. Ollie Gordon, Oklahoma State. Mentioned back to back 250 plus games in the month. He's been over 100 yards every time. I think you look at Oklahoma State's turnaround this season. It's in large part because of the work that he's done. Uh, I don't know who else you guys have. I had a couple others, but I think he's a pretty strong candidate. First of all, that's my, like, I've, again, I've got some others that I want to highlight. Um, in the He had four games in the month of October. Uh, the Oklahoma State goes 4-0 and in that uh, series. In the month of October alone, he's averaging 214.2 yards per game. In the month of October, uh, <laughs> next best is Georgia State's Marcus Carroll at 159. So he's more than 50 yards per game better than the second best or second most productive running back, uh, what he's meant to this Oklahoma State team and their turnaround and the way that this month has been. He did it against Kansas, Kansas State. Um, these are th these are the teams that are also competing for the Big 12 title. So in terms of significance, in terms of production, uh, I'm, I'm right there with you, Danny. I, I would endorse uh, Ollie Gordon as uh, as as our as, as a nominee. I will, I will go a step further in Ollie Gordon. You just mentioned his rushing yards in October, total yards including receiving. 999 total yards in four games, nine total touchdowns. The second, he's got 999 total yards. In second place is North Carolina's O'Marion Hampton with 655 yards. <laughs> so he's 354 more yards in the month than any other player in the country. So, yeah. Um, other guys to consider, I think I you're both voting for Ollie. I'm voting for Ollie. So I think we know who's winning, but I will just say other guys. <laughs> Frank Harris, UTSA, had a huge month for the Roadrunners, 1,204 yards, 12 touchdowns. Marvin Harrison, 31 catches, 553 yards, 5 touchdowns. James Madison's Jalen Green. I know we don't talk about defense here when it comes to the player of the month, but nine sacks, 25 pressures in the month. And Notre Dame's Xavier Watts, four interceptions, one of which he returned for a pick six, and a passer rating of 34.5 against him in the month. The guy I want to nominate over Ollie is a guy who was really instrumental in all three wins for a national title contender. And that's Marvin Harrison Jr. I mean, they, they were struggling against Maryland and then they were like, easy button. Let's just throw it up to Harrison. And he caught it 163 and a touchdown next week against Purdue, whatever. Then Penn state guys, Ohio state's offense ain't no different than Penn state's except for one guy. It's Harrison Jr. 19 targets, 11 catches, a buck 63 and a touchdown. Last week, I mean, 24 to 10 over Wisconsin. Do, do they lose that game without Harrison Jr.? I don't know, but it'd be a hell of a lot closer, right? Six catches, a buck 20, 23, two touchdowns. I mean, it, Ohio State could have a three loss month if they didn't have Marvin Harrison Jr. Like, he's been the difference. The passing offense without him is it's pretty mid. So I, I, I understand Ollie, and that's probably the right choice, but Harrison's had a huge impact from the receiver position. Um, we also talked about Daniels just in the month of October. Uh, you had wins against, yeah, it was Missouri, Auburn, and Army. Missouri's the big one. Nine touchdowns, one interception. Uh, best passer rating of all FBS quarterbacks in the month of October. Mm -hmm. And look, I know it was Minnesota, Indiana, and Michigan State, but J.J. McCarthy has been cooking. All right, I know it was Minnesota, Indiana, and Michigan State. Eight touchdowns, no interceptions, 11.4 yards per attempt. I would not nominate him over some of these other names i would not nominate him over his rival marvin harrison jr but at least a a spotlight that i wanted to shine on a, a player who when you're talking about michigan football you mention nine names before you get to jj mccarthy and i think you know connor stallions of course being one of them jim harbaugh jesse mentor you know just sort of just jay harbaugh run through the coaching staff and the ncaa investigation but i uh i think mccarthy had a pretty good month and that was that's a good thing because Michigan ran the spring game offense and had glorified practices for most of September. We were unimp wholly unimpressed. Conference season starts. Now we get to see the Wolverines and sort of what the next evolution of that offense looks like. And I think McCarthy's been pretty solid.
All right, so Ollie Gordon, we're doing it. Three. Congratulations yeah. to Oklahoma State running back. Ollie Gordon, you are the Cover 3 Podcast Player of the Month, the month of October. Funny Over guy. under on Connor Stallion's password being password. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> mentioned earlier, they're like, what's what's Connor Stallion's doing right now? He said, well, he's he's probably uh, using his own name and his credit own credit card number, and you know, checking hey, hotels in. Uh, he was very self aware when he knew the TV copy was going to be on him, and he went kind of like this <laughs> <laughs> when he was on the sidelines in Central Michigan. Allegedly, Can we get the coach of the month nomination. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Do you know which video I'm talking about? When they have the mm -hmm. guy that like the player runs off the field and he like almost hits the fan and he's right next to him. He literally like is trying to like it's like the guy with his girlfriend that's not his girlfriend and the kiss cam, and he's like, Oh crap. It's kind of like that. Allegedly. Yeah, I, allegedly. I, it really does look like the intern who's trying too hard. Yes. I, that's and why it, I want to nominate him for coach of the month. Like who else is going <laughs> above and beyond? Like, like Connor Stallions allegedly is like, on his own time. Doing this. Yeah. Allegedly. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, you think about summer interns at companies and you know, there's the try hard and, and the, the people who work there like, yeah, sure. Whatever. All right, cool. Like get out of my office now. I feel that's, that's the vibe I'm getting. It, do, it doesn't seem, it seems like he thought he was Belichick. It doesn't seem like, it seems like that was only in his own mind. I am less impressed by this scheme as though it was this giant, well-executed, nefarious plot with every single detail that we seem to be getting. Giant, nefarious plot, yes. Well-executed, no. No, I don't think it's even like... <laughs> giant would include people in real power, you know, doing more than like, oh, yeah, cool, thanks. I appreciate it. If it was well-executed, we would not have heard about it. Right. At least not yet. Yeah. yeah. Um, coach, uh, other than Connor Stallions, uh, <laughs> what nominees do we have for Coach of the Month? All right, I want to go last thing on any Google because I, I, I was going Connor. <laughs> you can nominate him. It's fine. You can, oh, yeah, you can nominate him. All right, Connor uh, Stallion's my nomination. He, uh, above <laughs> and beyond. My, I, I want to mention Mike Gundy and Matt Rule as yeah. nominees for Coach of the Month, both of whom kind of turned their seasons around in October and put their teams in the position to you know compete for conference titles. And Matt Rule's been doing it with a team that's really banged up and injured. But my actual nominee, my number one, a little bit off the board, I don't know if any of you other guys will have him there, Brent Pry, Virginia Tech, made the QB switch. That team's fortunes have drastically changed ever since they made that move. They lost the first couple of games, but it was a better long-term play and it is starting to pay off with more wins. They're only four and four overall, but they're three and one in the ACC and legitimately have a chance to reach the ACC I'm championship game. I don't think they will, but they have a chance. Stadium. I'll piggyback on that. Ding, 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 ding. They also played pretty well. Uh, what about Jeff Halfley, Boston College? Four and oh in the month. And how far ago does it seem? Was it Holy Cross? The players were talking trash after they mm -hmm. lost in North mm -hmm. in a dogfight versus Holy Cross. And they come back now to five and three on the year. Got a couple ACC coaches turnaround uh, seasons. Um, I was going to nominate Mike Gundy, but I couldn't because the team turnaround, maybe because he didn't play Ollie Gordon the first couple games. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of hard to say, like, way to go, coach. You finally found him. Um, I'll go, I was going to go Lance Leipold as one. But they also lost a couple games, like inexplicable. I mean, it was a signature win for the program, but I couldn't justify that. Um, I had Rhett Lashley four and zero in the month with four blowouts at SMU. But I'll go ahead. I'll go Brent Pry. I think what he's done has been phenomenal. Brent Key has huge wins against Miami and North ACC. Carolina. Let's go. But also a loss to Bowling Green. Bowling. Green. And a yeah. loss to Boston no, College that eliminate him from consideration for uh, for this award. I, I it actually is in the Cover Three Awards bylaws that if you lose to Boston College and Bowling Green in the same month, you are ruled ineligible. So tough scene. Big wins against the Hurricanes and the Heels, but uh, sorry, Brent Key. Wasn't the uh, wasn't the the Bowling Green loss the last day of September? It might. Have, I I, I oh, think okay. I'd be able to wipe that off the record. I. <laughs> I have I have a couple. It lingers um, though. <laughs> Jed Fish at Arizona, oh, mm -hmm. like, really nice job. Uh, I can't give it to him because he should have gone for two in that first overtime. So like that that's a demerit there. But nomination, not a winner. Uh, 
and now I'm blanking on the UNLV coach's name, but he's done a great job. Gary Odom. Gary Odom, really nice month, almost beat you know Fresno uh, last week. How about David Braun at Northwestern? Mm-hmm. Like two conference wins in a month is mm-hmm. pretty ridiculous. So a lot of good nominations. What Matt about um, yeah, Matt Campbell? Three and zero in the month wins against uh, TCU, Cincinnati, and at Baylor. Two of those being on the road away from Ames. Seems like all, all, all of our midseason turnaround guys are really leading the charge right now. So who gets the award? Uh, my vote's Pry. Good with that, but Danny. Uh, yeah, I mean, that? I seconded him when we talked about it, but like, there are some really good candidates. David Braun, what he was given, like what mm-hmm. he inherited before the season, a total mess. It's been great. I kind of vote Braun. Like he beat two teams that are definitely going bowling, right? At mm-hmm. Northwestern. That, that's that's kind of impressive. Maryland and Minnesota. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. You know, met a neighbor last night trick-or-treating, you know, a couple houses down. He did the thing like, I'm going to put the Northwestern jersey on the skeleton. You know, show you how dead everything is. <laughs> I, I, I gave him a little hat tip. I was like, that's funny. I, I like that. <laughs> so let's, let's give them some flowers right there. So congratulations to interim coach David Braun of Northwestern. You are the Cover 3 Podcast Coach of the Month. All right. Now the team of the month. And there are uh, oftentimes with, you know, team and coach does seem to be some correlation. I don't think Northwestern is going to be the team of the month, though. Nope. How about only one team of the month? Oh, is it not the world famous Ohio State Buckeyes? I was actually going their rival because YouTube has stopped juicing numbers for any kind of Dion related content, but they are loving that Michigan content. So Michigan (laughs) is my team of the month because this is a business. And anytime you talk Michigan, we are doing some numbers. So Wolverines, uh, based on a really really strong two-week traffic trend are my team at the month. I'm, I'm, I do mean Ohio State, by the way. Like, Yeah, no, the, legitimately they should be. You, you get the Penn State yeah. win. You go into Madison. It is not uh, a group that steps off the bus and scores 40, but they are awesome. And they finished the month being named by the selection committee the number one team in the first set of playoff rankings. It was a month that uh, I think you know has everybody reframing what Ohio State is. But they uh, they had some of the best and most significant wins in the country. Yeah, I think Ohio State is a perfectly good candidate. I would also nominate Oklahoma State again, four mm-hmm. and zero. But also one Danny mentioned SMU. Not only three and zero in the month, but won by forty five points per game. <laughs> like dominated the teams they played. I had Oklahoma State as well. I had Ole Miss. Uh, the big win over LSU was in the month, four and zero, undefeated in the month. So I had them. Oklahoma State, I gave them because you couldn't give it to Gundy because of the way he – but they it wasn't their fault. They're just going out there trying to win games. But I'll go Ohio State. I, I'm good with – Oklahoma State's on my list too. We, we didn't give Gundy – I had Gundy as a potential, but I if, if we're not going to go Gundy for coach – I go Ohio State because of the bigger wins over. Like it's just like the college football playoff. I think they've got the bigger wins than anybody else that we've nominated. So, and those Michigan fans have been juicing our YouTube numbers. They'll jump in just to give hate. Mm-hmm. Yes, they will. That's right. There we go. The other other one I wanted to nominate Troy, like being Road Warriors at Georgia State at Army. They smoked that Arkansas State team. They, they got hyped up, and then last week they they went on the road to Texas State. Like it's hard to just live on the road and. You know, three road wins in a month at a place like Troy is not super easy. So congratulations to the team of the month, the Ohio State Buckeyes. They dropped all the way down to six. They haven't lost a game. They dropped down to sixth in the polls and have worked their way all the way back up to number three in the AP poll, number one in the playoff rankings. Uh, Buckeyes enter a November that starts on CBS in Piscataway, Michigan State, Minnesota at home, and then the game in Ann Arbor against the fighting Connor Stallions. All right, game of the month for the month of October. I would like to nominate two off the bat. They were both at the beginning of the month. First, uh, Oklahoma 34, Texas 30, Red River there on October 7th. And then the very next week, 
Washington over Oregon in Seattle on October 14th. Both of those had uh, incredible national significance in terms of both conference and national title races. Both came down to the very, very last moments and plays. Both had huge swings in them. Uh, basically everything that you want out of a, a matchup between heavyweights. So I've got Red River and Washington, Oregon uh, as my nominations. Excellent nominations. Those yeah. are the top two on my board as well. But I'd also like to send some love to USC 43, Arizona 41, Houston 41, West Virginia 39 with the two oh. crazy plays in the final minute of the game. Uh, Stanford 46, Colorado 43. Most people were asleep. I wasn't. I watched the whole thing happen. And then how can you not mention Mississippi State 7, Arkansas 3, or Nevada 6, San Diego State 0? Those should probably be your third and fourth place winners. How can you not mention Haynes King taking two plays to drive the length of the field when you were given a gift <laughs> by Mario Cristobal for not taking a knee at the end of that one to go on to win 23-20. Uh, like you guys, I also at Stanford, that was the breakout party. Some people said the player of the month could have been Alec Aomenor, the uh, wide receiver who went off in that game. Uh, it was a good candidate. Uh, but, you know, 29 nothing historic comeback there. But I, the top two are clear. I think they're easy. The same ones Chip gave. Did we mention Oklahoma, Kansas? I had it down. I don't think it was that epic, but like disqualified. Yeah. Disqu any weather delay game Gosh, is disqualified. Fair, fair, fair. All right. <laughs> Didn't they boot it? They boot. I've never seen a, a network do that before. They were yeah. on Fox and they booted it to FS1. Typically, you don't see that. You'll see the the game that's just kicking off secondary network. I've never seen that before. Because they had, I mean, it was Oregon, Utah, which before, right until the third drive of the game, we thought was going to be. Like Should have gone back. Set up. We that made would a mistake. Hilarious. We Let's screwed up. Hold on. We're going back. And I, oh man, I don't have it pulled up. But there was another that sent an FS1 game to Fox Business. Mm -hmm. Like an FS1 <laughs> game started and like um Day Trade and Danny was pissed. He was trying to watch the market, right. and all of a sudden he had to watch whatever was on that. The scary oh, thing is whatever came on after Oklahoma Kansas, I remember being like, oh my God, like I would I would never in a million years put this on the main TV. And I was like, you look up like, whoa. How'd that get on there? Yeah, it, I think it, it was, was Cincinnati. You know, like, you're just there's like, some really bad like, third I tier, watch. Uh, third tier Big Twelve game. Um, all right, so which one? I'm I'm voting for Oregon Washington because I feel like not only was it a great game with two top ten teams, but I also feel like narrative wise, it gave us a whole lot of stuff to talk about with like the fourth down decisions and whatnot. I thought the quality of play was better in that one than Red River. Ooh, like both teams executed better i thought like they're both team played some defense it, it it was less like like they made mistakes type thing i i thought that was the a lot of drama and high quality of play both sides that's my vote i'll go both of them similar i mean both the drives dylan gabriel put together and michael Penix put together to come back and win i'll go oregon washington i love the controversy aspect you know the the over three on fourth downs i like that that was a topic and i also think that game will have more significant playoff implications. Also, maybe a preview of what we'll see in Las Vegas. So, congratulations to Washington's win against Oregon. You are the Cover 3 Podcast Game of the Month for the month of October. And now, everyone's favorite portion of the show. Tom, let's hear it. The Fernellis. All right, well, we've discussed this man a lot already on the show today, so it's he deserves an award. The Austin Powers International Man of Mystery of the Month goes to Connor Stallions, the Michigan assistant, for just going above and beyond to do his job and to get the signals. And again, that is allegedly him on the sideline at the Western Michigan game. We don't know for sure. Uh, the Steve Spurrier Award for shit-talking his coach of the month Goes to Georgia's Kirby Smart. I know Dave Doran told Steve Smith to kiss his ass, but that's not really talking crap. That's just kind of an angry coach. Kirby was putting his player hating on at the podium in press conferences all month, whether it was addressing the Michigan sign stealing by talking about, I don't think it mattered much in our game, or going after Dan Mullen's recruiting prowess in front of everybody for the world to see. Just an incredible performance. I'm happy to see Kirby's feeling himself. He's won two national titles. His team's getting rolling, and he's feeling great about it. Uh, the dumbest decision of all time of the month 
Mario Cristobal for not kneeling. You idiot. What the hell were you doing? Um, the Stop Trying to Make Fetch Happen Award of the Month goes to Gus Johnson for Maserati Marv. It sucks. It's a terrible nickname. I hope the check cleared. Drop it and move on. Fair catch signal of the month. Oh. I was Cooper DeJean. Buddy, it was a fair catch. I wish it wasn't because I bet on an Iowa defensive or special teams touchdown plus 700 in that game. But it was a fair catch. The call wasn't wrong. I'm sorry. Uh, the segment of the month goes to day trading Danny. It's been a great segment. I've loved it every single week. I hope it keeps going. I really enjoy it. The worst governing body of the month award goes to the NCAA. <laughs> you only existed for years to bust kids for getting money. And now that they can legally get paid and you have to figure out what the hell you're supposed to do now, instead of doing it yourself, you're begging Congress to figure it out for you. You're worthless. You have no purpose. Move on with your lives. Um, the wagon of the month, Ooh. SMU. Not only did they go 3-0 and straight up and beat teams by 45 points per game, but they went 3-0 and against the spread and covered by 26 points per game. You're not an official wagon. You're just the wagon of the month. And then finally, the Vladimir Putin propaganda machine of the month goes to our very own Bud Elliott for trying to get North Carolina and Louisville ranked in the top 10 every single week to boost Florida State's college football playoff resume. So congratulations, Bud. <laughs> it is a it is a multi-platform propaganda machine. It's really impressive. It is more impressive and well run than Connor Stallion's sign stealing scandal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh uh, thank you, Tom. That was excellent. Uh, congratulations to everybody, including our, our winners. Winners. 